What's up folks, how's it going this one watch? Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the gaming performance of the M1 Pro powered 16 inch version of the MacBook Pro. We've been doing a lot of testing for the past couple of weeks with it. And we're gonna go through a couple of different real world uh, gaming benchmark results on Mac OS X, as well as some synthetic benchmarks that are available on this platform as well. Unfortunately, uh, since the Apple based Silicon cannot run Windows natively, we would have a much better game library available since Windows is pretty much the go-to for PC gaming, uh, but we're gonna do the best we can with the options available on Mac OS X. So before we get into the actual performance results, we just have to mention our sponsor that made this content possible. Now, if you don't know already, Skillshare is one of the biggest online learning communities out there designed for anybody that wants to broaden their horizons or knowledge on a given topic, whether that's involving more creative endeavors such as in physical fine art or digital content creation. Perhaps you want to master or learn for the first time on how to use things like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, etc. Or you want to increase your productivity and marketing skills. Chances are there's probably a class on Skillshare.com that's suited perfectly for your knowledge base and your skill level. Now, me being a tech YouTuber myself, I definitely have to recommend that you guys check out the brand new class that Skillshare just launched with Marquez Brownlee of MKBHD, where he talks about the secret to his success and how he creates his awesome YouTube content from initial conception to research, scripting, shooting, editing, and then finally posting the content on the YouTube platform. So if you're interested in uh, maybe creating your own uh, tech channel or or just interested in his process, definitely check out that class. Now, if you're interested in Skillshare Premium, where you get access to all these awesome classes, uh, definitely click on the description down below. The first 1,000 subscribers to use that link and to sign up, get a free one month trial of the premium service. We want to thank Skillshare so much for the continuing support of our channel. Now, if you're wondering about the specific model of the 16 inch MacBook Pro that we're going to be testing out specifically, well, we're using the baseline. $2,500 configuration. So that comes with an M1 Pro 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD drive. Now for another thousand dollars, you can also upgrade to the M1 Max version of this laptop, which will get you 32 cores on the GPU end. It will also double your memory bandwidth from 200 gigabytes a second to 400 gigabytes a second. You can also increase your RAM capacity up to 64 gigabytes and your long-term storage up to eight terabytes. All in all, a max configuration of the 16 inch MacBook will probably cost well over $5,000, which I don't have, but luckily we still managed to get our hands on the baseline configuration, which will give us a good idea in terms of what the starting point of the gaming performance is on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, firstly, I just wanna talk through our uh, synthetic benchmark results, specifically on Unigen's Valley. We set the benchmark to 1920 by 1080 ultra details settings, and uh, basically here are the results over here. On the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the 16 core GPU, we got an average frame rate per second of 76 Point two on uh, the 14 inch MacBook Pro that has a 14 core GPU, exact same uh, scenario. We got 74.5 average frames per second. We also did the exact same benchmark on the M1 version of the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which had an eight core GPU, and that scored about 47.8 average frames per second. Furthermore, we also used the Rise of the Tomb Raider synthetic benchmarking tool, set the resolution to 2560 by 1600. FX, AA, as well as very high detail settings on the textures. And the results on the 16 inch MacBook Pro are about five to 8% better than on the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an overall score of 51.27 average frames per second on all three of the benchmark scenarios. On the 14 inch version, uh, the overall score was 47 0.25 average frames per second and on the 13 inch macbook pro we got 34.49 average frames per second now beyond that we did run through a couple of different gaming titles on the mac os 10 platform which isn't that much compared to windows but nonetheless we used the uh, inboard FPS counter in Steam, as well as an application known as Count It, which records your average minimum maximum frames per second on OS X, similar to what Fraps does on the PC side. And most of the games that we played were set to 2560 by 1600 in terms of resolution. We maxed out most of the texture details on all the gaming titles and the games 
we specifically tested out was Rise of the Tomb Raider with the Syria level, CSGO, Dirt 4, City Skylines, the 2017 version of F1, as well as Euro Truck Simulator 2. Now at this point, I'm gonna stop talking. You guys can take a look at the results. We tested out all three uh, laptops, so it'll give you a good idea in terms of what you're getting from a GPU graphics perspective on the 13, 14, and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now in summary, based on our experience thus far, I would say that the 14 inch version of the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor gives you a 25 to 30% bump in terms of GPU and graphical performance compared to the previous iteration, eight core GPU on the first generation M1 chip. Now, when you move from a 14 core GPU to a 16 core GPU found on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the results are definitely a lot more subtler, only getting a five to 8% improvement in terms of overall FPS scores based on our experience thus far. And if you haven't watched our video directly comparing the 16 inch and 14 inch version of the MacBook Pro, definitely check that out, where you'll find that the differences between the baseline configuration of both the 16 inch and 14 inch MacBook Pro is very subtle. You're not really getting too much performance difference unless you go for the big $5,000 or $3,500 16 inch version of the MacBook Pro with 32 core GPU, which I haven't tested out, uh, but I'm sure the performance is going to be a lot more drastic and uh, definitely a lot faster than what we're encountering with these two specific models. In summary though, I would definitely say that I'm super impressed with the M1 Pro chip, both from a productivity perspective as well as a gaming perspective. The only disappointment is that it doesn't run Windows, which would be really awesome considering the fact that the library of games available is not even a comparison compared to what's offered on OS X, which is uh, very sad to say uh, nonetheless. But if you have any specific questions, definitely let me know. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Check out the description down below for details information about everything we talked about and I'd definitely like to thank our sponsor Skillshare that made this content possible. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you real soon in the next one.